church militants all new download. We're back after months of construction and dust and moving. We've got a new studio to bring you the very best in Catholic news and discussion. Stephen Wynn and of course Michael Voris are here as well, so let's get to it. Here's today's Headlines Recap. The bishops are raising taxes on parishes and the soft peddling of abortions back in the news. Meanwhile, Cardinal Robert Seurat is being forced to remove Benedict's name from a book that's causing all sorts of controversy. Those are our headlines. In a vote taken last week, the bishops raised the diocesan tax imposed on each diocese by 3%. That's a reaction to Catholics withholding contributions, especially since so much information about the still ongoing cover-up of clerical sex abuse is in the headlines. Cardinal Raymond Burke is slamming the U.S. bishops for de-emphasizing the evil of abortion. He should slam them for also raising taxes and focusing on Democrat social justice talking points. He said, quote, until we restore respect for human life, none of the teaching on the other social issues has any solid foundation, spot on. Those words closely track what Pope St. John Paul also said in his famous encyclical, Gospel of Life, Evangelium Vitae, and a new book co-authored by Pope Benedict and Cardinal Robert Seurat, depending how you defend, de, uh, define co-authored, defends priestly celibacy. But after heavy backlash from leftist critics accusing the retired pontiff of interfering with Pope Francis's agenda, Cardinal Seurat is being asked to remove Benedict's name as co-author. The book's title is From the Depths of Our Hearts, and the book confirms church teaching and discipline on clerical celibacy, but leftist critics like James Martin, Austin Ivory, Massimo Fagiolo were quick to accuse Benedict of interfering with the Pope's so-called synodal process, which end, may end up allowing married priests in the Amazon. You know, first topic, I, I think, because it, it really speaks to a much larger issue, the uh, bishops raising taxes. Now, here we are in the most incredible economy ever where taxes were lowered and everything's going well. The bishops, on the other hand, are, when we talk about groups left out of the economic boom, it would be them, but it's their own self-doing. Their constant payout of sex abuse, their cover-up for it, diminishing numbers, smaller revenue, the yeah. lower revenue rolls. They got to raise taxes on people. Give me, a, they really do stick to Democrat talking points. <laughs> they really they even do. raise taxes. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, they're really they're feeling the pinch. Dioceses all over the world are feeling the pinch because people are reacting to the whole sex abuse crisis, the McCarrick revelations. Yeah. People are just not wanting to give anymore, and this is true of the Vatican as well. The Vatican has had a, a great decrease in donations, but you know the way that they went about getting this vote is interesting because. The, the U.S. bishops at their November meeting in Baltimore, they weren't able to get the necessary votes, the two-thirds supermajority vote, to raise the tax by whatever, 3%. So what they did was they mailed out ballots to retired bishops and things like that. Then they got the votes they needed, and then they passed this last week. And so that's reminiscent of what uh, Cardinal Bernadine did back in the 70s to get communion in the hand, Holy Communion in the hand pushed through the bishops' conference. Three years in a row, he tried to get the vote. He couldn't get the vote. So after they had gone away, he sent out uh, ballots. He had people from the conference go around visiting retired, like old retired bishops who had nothing to do with the institution at the time anymore, guys on golf courses and retirement homes on their deathbeds. And they took a poll, and he comes back and says, oh, we polled all the bishops, and they say, so we're going to put it through. And it's crooked dealing. It, it really, it is. really is. And, yeah. Yeah, and briefly, let's talk about this book. That, I mean, you know, what does co-authored mean if you write part of the book? Aren't you a co-author if you write part of the book? I mean, Gonswine himself, who's the one who requested that Benedict's name be removed as co-author, he admits that, yes, okay, he did author these chapters. He did. <laughs> but don't but now, say that. now he's just a contributor. It's, he's not the main author. And you know that none of this would have happened if it hadn't been for this leftist backlash from yeah. people saying that you're trying to interfere with the synodal process and getting in the way of Pope Francis' agenda for possible married priests in the Amazon. I mean, yeah. give me a break. You know what they're going to do, and they, you know, the, the, I, I believe, if I understand correctly, the book itself is already published and on the way to distributors. Yeah, so and it says, from the depths <laughs> of our hearts. Yeah. Well, it says, <laughs> co-authored by. I don't know, I mean, is Mark Brumley at Ignatius Press going to have to reprint, you know, two million books or something? I mean, that's the, at least the jacket And the, And the title was approved by Pope Benedict, yes. so. Yeah, it, it's, all, it's all crazy. Yeah. Well, that's it for today's Headlines Recap. We're going to step away now for 10 seconds, and when we come back, those evil, evil Democrats. Stay tuned. We're inviting you to come to our eighth annual Retreat at Sea. You'll learn what direction you need to take with your own faith, along with building the discipline and dedication of the faith in your daily life. So what are you waiting for? Sign up today 
and we'll see you on board. The Democrats running for president are some of the most evil people ever to seek U.S. political office. We'll see the six who are left debating tonight in Des Moines, Iowa, including bad Catholic Joe Biden, phony Christian Pete Buttigieg, and Bernie Sanders. Now, despite their support for unlimited abortion, socialism, and the suppression of free speech, many voting Catholics are going along with it, thinking they're being good Catholics. Here's Bradley Eli with more. I will fight for you with every breath in my body. Regardless of who in the so-called party of death Trump faces this November, Catholic commentator Michael Voris, first to call the 2016 election for Trump, says the president needs more than 50% of the Catholic vote to remain in office. Trump had promised Catholics he'd remain pro-life and defend their religious liberties. Promises Trump kept from defunding abortion abroad on his second day in office to protecting in August the right of religious organizations to, quote, make employment decisions consistent with their sincerely held religious tenets, end quote. In other words, fire openly gay employees. Under the Constitution and laws. Of Trump also promised to elect pro-life judges. The dogma lives loudly within you. Something Democrats clearly understand and strongly oppose. Yet a recent poll shows only 44% of American Catholics would likely vote for Trump this fall. According to polls, Catholics don't vote based on what's called intrinsic moral issues, such as abortion, being moved instead by social justice policies involving the environment and immigration, following the lead of prelates like Chicago's Cardinal Blaise Supich and San Diego's Bishop Robert McElroy. It is not Catholic teaching that abortion is the preeminent issue that we face as a world in Catholic social teaching. It is not. Trump's been faithful to American Catholics. His dilemma, however, is that American Catholics aren't all that faithful. Brad Eli, Church Militant, Detroit. You guys know one of the main things we're talking about here, uh, as Cardinal Burke said, is abortion. And you know, every year, every election year, they, the bishops, U.S. bishops, produce this worthless document, uh, you know, faithful citizenship, voting your conscience, and blah blah blah. And all it is is this weird balance. It's not even a balance. It's completely out of balance. We say, you know, you know, abortion's a bad thing, but you also got to worry about people, you know, can't go to McDonald's as many times as they want to. And there's all kinds of abuses of human rights, and everything's put on this same level. Again, this is an artifact from Cardinal Bernadine. You know, we have many artifacts from Cardinal Bernadine, gay bishops and priests, you know, thousands of, you know, homosexuals in the seminary, you know, raping children. We've got all this stuff left over from Bernadine. Uh, but, uh, which goes to show that, you know, the, uh, even though a man may die, his evil continues long past him. Uh, but as you look at the, the, the question of abortion, it's really staggering. You know, look at the U.S. bishop's response to abortion. I think it was three or four years ago they took some vote sort of condemning abortion and the whole uh, assembly of bishops at their meeting stood up in this like vigorous round of applause and the USCCB press office couldn't wait to announce that to everybody like oh and they showed video of it and everything. What, what are we supposed to be like you know somehow impressed that the successors of the apostles are, are opposed to slaughtering children in the womb? but you don't do anything about yeah, exactly. it. exactly. Very few bishops ever show up for the March for Life. There is no national collection for anything mm -hmm. pro-life. Uh, they are constantly going on about nothing except uh, you know, immigration, this and that, and everything else. Uh, one of our uh, uh, producers here pointed out to me that since the beginning yeah. of the year, I think there's been like 37 tweets or something from the U.S. Bishops' Conference. One or two have been about something not abortion other than immigration, and all the rest are about well, immigration. Well, I can guarantee you, if the bishops were getting $96 million a year for pro-life efforts the way they're getting for immigration efforts, oh, they'd be out there all the time with press releases about pro-life. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Yeah, and you wonder if some of their, short, their shortfall also is due to the fact that, uh, you know, they're raising the taxes on parishes, because mm -hmm. that money goes to the USCCB. Right. That's what right. it is. Uh, is that due to Trump's election that they have, you know, tighter budgets? We know that they have lost money 
uh, because Trump's in office. They're not getting as much as for immigration care and all oh, that yeah. stuff. So, mm-hmm. right. Well, another uh, uh, evil the Democrats are promoting is their, their really the radical socialist vision for America. The, the leading 2020 contenders are almost entirely, ironically, old white millionaires. And, A couple you know, of billionaires. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's true. That's true. And, you know, they say money shouldn't be concentrated in the hands of a few, but they're demanding high taxes to increase dependence on the state and promoting really just moral garbage. Now, first of all, we've seen in country after country socialism is most recently in venezuela socialism devastates the middle class it, it absolutely uh, it hollows them out really uh, and the same would happen in this country if if what the democrats want for the country is implemented you know add to this the moral travesties that they're wanting to funnel our money to you know for unlimited taxpayer funded abortion for example uh, including infanticide they also want to target <clears throat> innocent children with uh, just radical sex education curricula, including some that are either designed or sponsored by Planned Parenthood. They're also pushing for passage of various LGBT initiatives uh, that really are, are each each of those is a, is a fundamental threat to our religious liberty. One of those is the Equality Act, which would force every state to uh, open girls' restrooms to gender confused boys. It would also mandate that uh, every state allow, uh, again, gender confused boys to uh, be admitted to play girls sports. Uh, it would also ban discrimination. When you think about that, yeah. I mean, think about, you know, going after white suburban moms. Yeah. It, if you're a white suburban mom, 40, you know, 40, 50 something, and you know, you've got daughters and they play sports, mm-hmm. I would think you would be outraged. Oh, absolutely. I mean, every kid who participates in ath- athletics, high school athletics, you know, boys or girls, a lot of time and effort and the whole bit and everything. All of a sudden, the, the, the playing field or court or whatever it is, swimming pool, is all of a sudden the balance is tipped mm-hmm. because of the physiological difference between males and females. Mm-hmm. I, I, why suburban moms aren't going nuts over that is, is, is a shock. Mm-hmm. But, you know, of course, the Democrats, watch the debate tonight. Will that come up as a point? Transgender rights will come up, sure. but how about the injustices caused to just you know normal kids? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually think the majority of Americans are not on the side with the Democrats on this whole transgender oh, issue, great. but it's just their voices aren't really being heard. Yeah. But you know, another way in which the, the, the Democrats' evil has been put on display is, in addition to just suppressing any free speech that they disagree with, they have no problem destroying reputations just mm-hmm. to get their agenda across. Case in point, Justice Brett Kavanaugh. The way he was treated, this man, who's a practicing Catholic, by the way, was atrocious, if you recall. Christine Blasey Ford came out of the blue and accused him of kind of standing by, by, by while she was being attacked and raped and assaulted. Now, he, has, he came out vociferously denying all of this. Um, and then, but, but here she is. The, the media, you know, does a pile-on against him. Suddenly, m- m- many other people come out of the woodworks, you know, these women coming forth saying, oh, yes, he gang-raped me, and he did this, and he did that. And pretty much all of these claims ended up being totally discredited. There were, you know, for instance, Christine Blasey Ford, the witness that she calls to say she can corroborate this, Leland Kaiser, her, a lifelong friend. Leland Kaiser's attorney you know, s- submits a public statement saying she does not know Brett Kavanaugh. She's never met him before in her life. She cannot corroborate the story. This was the one person that she said, <laughs> she will confirm this. She's my lifelong friend. Then on top of that, this claim that Christine Blasey Ford said, well, I didn't want to fly out to DC because I'm afraid of heights. I've had a life, afraid of flying. I've had a lifelong fear of flying. Well, then she's got a previous boyfriend who you know, submits a public statement saying, you know, I dated her for quite a while, like I think four years or so. She had no problem flying out to Hawaii all the time. I mean, that's a much longer flight well, than from California to DC. They didn't one of the senators, if I remember, they, they, they queried her uh, about going to like Fiji or something on scuba diving expeditions. Yeah, that was she liked to, uh, you know. It, correct. It, it, yeah, she was yeah. on planes for hours. Yeah. Hour there was no problem trips. then. So suddenly she developed some fear of flying. Like suddenly at the Selective time when she was called because she didn't yeah. want to fly to Washington D.C. pretending all oh, this is too traumatic. And, yeah, and then of course you know you have like Julie Swetnick who was just the yeah. least credible. She was the one who had Michael Avenatti, who's been totally discredited as a lawyer, coming out saying yes, I was gang raped, and then suddenly on TV she backtracked saying well. Maybe I wasn't, you know, just the whole thing <laughs> fell uh, apart. Uh, but but, you, but to this <laughs> day, to this day, not a single apology from any of the Democrats no, no, about no. this. And to the point with the bishops on this, look, I mean, this you can transfer this over is another thing that what do we have? We have uh, what we reported on yesterday, Nick Salmon settle, settling his suit, though, you know, in front of the, the U.S. Supreme Court steps, $250 million suit. 
again, no apology, no apology from the uh, uh, from the Democrats, no apology from uh, certainly the bishops and the bishops who piled on to him. Where were the bishop statements on what was going on to Brett Kavanaugh, a Catholic? Where were the bishop statements on what was going on, the unfairness and injustice that was going on in that high school kid, uh, you know, and by association, all the rest of them as well. Uh, so there is a. Uh, uh, it, 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 the fact that 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 Catholic bishops are so willing to immediately jump on the side of anything that is Democrat, the party of death, and then the one issue that kind of they, they can't totally embrace, abortion, they just sort of fall silent on. And they fall silent on it, not just on a political level, they fall silent on inside the parishes and the churches and the chanceries and everything else as well. Yeah. They, you know, there's a the little question of, you know, receiving Holy Communion in violation of Canon 915, if you're a pro-abortion Catholic politician, you, it says you must not be admitted to Holy Communion. It doesn't say, well, it's kind of up to the discretion of, you know, whatever a particular bishop may be. But again, the USCCB, which needs to raise taxes because it's chasing people out of the church, turns around and says, well, we all sat around and decided at a meeting that, you know, we just sort of let's handle this on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah, and Scharfenberger, who's taken over for Buffalo, we talked about yesterday, he's another one who said, well, we just decided to handle this on sort of a case-by-case, bishop-by-bishop basis. And you're like, it, are there any of you that have any integrity whatsoever? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's one of the greatest ongoing scandals in the church as far as I'm concerned, this, the, the failure to, uh, you know, impose Canon 915, which is mandatory. But, yeah. you know, the fate of our children and our families hang in the balance. And, love it or hate it, politics is a big decider in what happens. And faithful Catholics need to participate. We're taking a quick 10-second break now, but stick around. When we come back, the sanctuary of shame. We'll explain. Again, in the all new download, we're dedicating each weekday to a specific type of story that fits the given day's theme. On Tuesdays, today's Tuesday, this will be our first installment of The Sanctuary of Shame. Now, today, Italian Bishop Dario Olivero announced that the Mass at Mass of the Epiphany last week, that he was omitting the Nicene Creed so that non-Catholics in attendance, get this, wouldn't be offended. Oh. He told his bewildered congregation, quote, since there are also non-believers, everyone will say it silently. Those who believe it can say it, and those who don't believe it or have other beliefs, you know, or are offended by it or whatever, will silently contemplate the reasons for their beliefs. Of course, their beliefs could be Satan worship or worship of Muhammad or, you know, whatever it is. Uh, this but is just pathetic. That's not it Catholic at all. Yeah. It's just but so pathetic. I'm personally offended by that. I think that's absurd. Yeah. Uh, we should omit him from <laughs> his position, I think. Yeah, uh, that's what's just a nut job. He's a nut job. Yeah, yeah. I mean, where on earth? You can't get Catholics into the, into the <laughs> churches. Why on earth are you worrying about what Muslims, who probably aren't there, right. uh, you can't get them in the door? Why would a Muslim be sitting in Catholic Mass? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe a friend's bringing him, fine. But, I mean... If a friend is bringing somebody to a Catholic mass they're not familiar with, then you want them to hear what it is they believe. But no, don't offend yeah, them. It's just you know some of these. I, I, it, is it still a excommunicable offense to punch a bishop in the face because <laughs> he's an idiot? I mean, are we allowed to do that? I, I don't know. Let's not test it. Let's not test. It. Uh, and again, we're bringing you viewer comments. We have two today. In response to yesterday's Vortex Deja Vu All Over Again, addressing the Vatican's attack on church militant, Radical Trad comments, quote, This indicates the missiles are hitting their intended target. Tony Spadaro and Rick Sticka are on a warpath as of late. Rick is, in one of his tweets, insinuated that CM was fake news, end quote. And another comment by Robert John Bennett says, quote, I admit that I used to be fairly liberal politically, but now, mainly because of church militant, if I had to put myself into any group, it would be with these people, as described in today's Vortex. The most politically conservative voters are also faithful, orthodox, mass-going Catholics who oppose Pope Francis's liberal social justice warrior weaponizing of the papacy." Close quote. 
Yeah, it's a it's a good group to be in. I agree. Uh, when you're talking about po you know po uh, politics, you know you just got a Catholic up on stage, you know tonight at the at the debate. But when you're talking about politics, you can't talk about the Catholic vote. You got to talk about this Catholic vote and then the fake Catholic vote. And in the total universe of baptized Catholics, there are more fake Catholics than there are our actual Catholics. These are the Trump guys. These are the guy that President Trump has to talk to, yeah. play to. They're already in his base. He has they to are. strengthen them, and hopefully you can peel off just a few of these guys on other issues, the fake Catholics, who've been brainwashed for 50 years by liberal bishops yeah. and gay priests and everything else. Absolutely. Now, for the rest of the month and into mid-February, everyone will have access to the download for free. Of course, it's a premium program, but we'd like to make it freely available to everyone for a month. Please respond with your feedback and let us know your thoughts about the show and any questions you may have. It's a new faster paced format where you can still get good meaty discussion, but other news as well, because so much is going on in the church these days, it's difficult not to report on all of it because you need to know the news. That's it for today. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again here tomorrow on the download. God bless you.